practice. <laughs> the doctor said it's not good for my eardrums. <laughs> what does he know though? Dressed with some of the nicest parts in the bunch, the Fazari Cascade Peak seems like it could be the supercar of the value of fuel test here in Tucson, Arizona. The DVO fork alone costs more than a third the price of the whole bike. The frame uses a proven horse link suspension platform to deliver its 130 millimeters of rear wheel travel. But the head tube angle and reach are both a little bit conservative for 2022 standards. Four years ago, this would have been progressive geometry. Could yesterday's progressive be perfect for up and coming riders? Is the fancy parts spec good enough to win testers over? Let's find out. How's this thing ride out on the trail, guys? What's, uh, what's the climbing ability like? Let's start with that. Yeah, when it comes to climbing, this bike just kind of goes. It's not particularly zippy. It's not super sluggish and wallowy either. It's just very neutral, middle of the road. It's not, almost really not a lot to talk about. It's not the lightest bike here. It's not the heaviest, it's like 33 pounds, which for a value priced bike, it's kind of acceptable. Um, yeah, the geometry feels a little dated, even on the climbs. I think the seat angle is a little bit slacker than what we're starting to see. The top tube length is a little bit shorter because of that, uh, because of the shorter reach as well. The head angle is a little bit steeper. So it just kind of feels kind of like a bike from a few years ago. Yeah, I would echo that too. When, when you're sitting in the saddle and you're climbing, the position is definitely, the position says 2017. It does not say 2022 and that's, I mean, not necessarily a bad thing. The bike actually climbed just fine, right, Casimir? Like it, it handled the, the tight stuff just as well as the other bikes, maybe even a little bit better in some settings, but it definitely felt kind of dated. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like a generation ago-ish. Like it's like, it's not totally behind the times, but it's also not 2022 progressive as far as the geometry is concerned, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think the suspension, if we want to talk about that next, it pedals, decently well again like there's nothing overtly wrong with how the suspension performs um it seems to not really need the lockout switch unless you really want to use it i will mention though the fox shocks pedal assist switch rattles when it's in full open yeah. or full closed right but when it's in the mi middle setting it's firm it doesn't it's rattle more tension that way yeah. yeah yeah which is kind of annoying yeah i kind of tended to ride it with it in the middle position so i don't think i noticed that as much the middle position just gives you a little more support it felt fine for going up and down so i was able to just leave it alone but rattly feature is not ideal yeah and this is a horse link bike and most of the full suspension bikes in the test were horse link do you feel like this was sort of on the more pedal performance side of horse link stuff or more on the sort of supple open characteristic? I would say more open to be honest. I mean, none of these bikes pedal all that well. Like we're comparing how the Ferrari pedals against the Specialized and the Kona. Um, and they all, they, they kind of pedal just fine to be honest. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, you know, crazy good about them. They don't inspire me to like jump out of the saddle and pedal hard, but then what do you expect? Should they cast? Well, I mean, we've got that Izzo. It's a little bit more than this. And that is a bike that inspires you to pedal hard and go fast. So yeah, yeah, for where this bike sits, it's just kind of, it's really middle of the road, which isn't bad. It's just, if you're looking for a bike that makes you want to find super techie climbs or just sprint all the time, this isn't going to be the one. Cut! I've got an important announcement about pizza and Beta MTB, I got you with the pizza though. For just 24 bucks a year, which is about the price of a medium deep dish stuffed crust, you guys get early access to our field test videos, bonus videos, and you're gonna get to read Ryan Palmer's grumpy writing over on Beta MTB. All right, so now let's talk about the descending performance of the bike. Kaz, what'd you think about how this bike goes downhill? It's kind of weird, I can just keep saying middle of the road because yeah. it just, it is middle of the road. And the geometry we mentioned, a little bit dated, so the reach, a little bit shorter than some of the other bikes we have here. It's 463 millimeter reach. Um, so it just feels a little bit shorter. It does come with a 60 mil stem, but that doesn't really compensate for a shorter reach, but you can go downhill too. It's kind of, a, it's got that all rounder feel, kind of feels kind of ready for almost anything without going too crazy. Yeah, I will say though, that there are definitely places where I think I might have more fun on a bike like the Fazari than I would some of the other bikes. 
Um, I could see it being more you know, playful and easy to throw around, but also, I mean, we get some bikes that are way longer that give you more confidence on the descent, and that more confidence translates into that style of riding too. So it's kind of like, ah. Eh. I did notice that the bike itself kind of feels tall, um, and it also just feels like you're perched, perched a little bit more above it rather than kind of sitting down into it. When you are cornering, um, it just feels like you're sitting a little bit higher. It doesn't have that kind of fluttery feel over the ground. It kind of feels a little bit firmer, I'd say, but it does allow you to push it in some cases. I'm gonna piggyback on that, Kaz. I will say that it does feel quite solid though. Like we have some rattly bikes here. Like you guys, the Specialized, you guys talked about the Specialized a bit and the suspension, it kind of made the bike feel a little, getting like it's getting chucked around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was undergunned suspension-wise. Yeah, this thing here, I didn't get that impression from this bike. Like it didn't make any silly noises. It didn't feel like it was getting chopped around or anything. It just worked and yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, it does have a really solid feel for a, kind of a, a stout little trail bike. All right guys, so now let's talk about the component spec a little bit. This thing comes with like, it's a $3,000 bike that comes with a $1,000 fork. That's pretty cool to see. Like, can you comment on that and then maybe some of your other highlights? It's like Vizari found some overstock somewhere, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lucky for us though, because the fork works really well. We've mentioned it already. It's super adjustable and Kaz, you said this, it's awesome to see this much adjustment on the front of a bike at this price. Low speed compression, high speed compression, low speed rebound, and then DVO's off the top feature, so that lets you adjust how sensitive the fork is off the top. You can compensate for your spring rate. Pretty neat stuff. Yep, also going on, I, overall the whole package, it is probably one of the better spec bikes that we found at this price. You get a full GX drivetrain. So we talked about a lot of the other bikes where they have a NX or SX, and those, if you want to upgrade things in the future, they use a different free hub body. So this has full GX as G2 brakes. Uh, it does have a 160 rotor in the back, 180 up front. I think it was me, I'd probably put a little bit bigger rotor just to get a little more braking performance out of those brakes because they're kind of, they're not the absolute most powerful, but it's not the end of the world. But overall, super solid spec for the price. Yeah, before we move on, we should also point out that Ferzari has taken the opposite approach to some other brands here. Ferzari has a frame that we've mentioned it before, works just fine, but it's obviously a bit dated. Like this frame has been around for a few years and they put some really nice components that make sense for trail riders on it. Whereas we have other bikes here where the frame might be nicer, but in order to compensate for that, it has forks that are doing weird things and brakes that aren't braking and yeah. questionable things. And that's not the Fazari. Like this Fazari, you could pick it up and you could just hit the trails right away. It's got nice stuff on it. And that's definitely something worth mentioning. So as far as out on the trail, how did the actual time testing go? Yeah, so for time testing on the climbs, it was the third fastest climber, three out of five. And then on the descent, it was actually tied with the stump jumper for first place. So um, I think that could have to do with the smaller wheelbase and it does feel solid. So it lets you push a little bit. And on our test track, it had a lot of weird, kind of awkward, quick maneuvers around rock. So that might've helped give it the edge there. All right, guys, so let's get into the value uh, of the bike and like the models and what's offered sort of around this bike exactly. This is the Cascade Peak and uh, there are three sort of models within that carry the same frame and are uh, just different part specs. So why don't we compare like what is offered by them a little bit. They do one with 27.5 inch wheels, so we rule that one out right away. <laughs> <laughs> and then they also do a, a different 29er that costs $1,850. And for that one, you're getting an X-Fusion fork and an NX drivetrain compared to this bike's GX drivetrain and G2 brakes. I mean, that is a deal on it, like, yeah. right? Like a thousand dollar fork. I know, on a three thousand dollar <laughs> bike. So I'm like, part of me is like, uh, oh, you know, I think I would just do this thing actually. So I have two pros for you. Uh, one of them, Casimir might disagree with, but I'm gonna include it anyway. But we're gonna start off with the component spec. We mentioned it before. This thing comes with a really interesting adjustable DVO fork and a bunch of other stuff that just works really well. My second pro could also be a con, Kaz. You know, we've talked about the frame and the geo and how the frame feels like it's, you know, maybe three or four years old. I still think there are riders out there that that's just gonna work just fine for them. And because they're okay with that, they're gonna get a great bike at a great price with great components. Kazmer, what do you think about the cons? 
I think for the cons, we've, we've touched on it a bunch, but it's gonna be that frame, the geometry just feels a little bit dated. You know, for a lot of people, it could be totally fine, but if you're looking for the kind of latest and greatest cutting edge geometry, this bike doesn't have that. Um, so, you know, it's a bike that you could, it's got nice parts, but the frame, you know, you might ride some other bikes and make, oh, I wish it had a little slacker, a little longer, something like that. So I'd say the frame geometry could potentially hold it back slightly. So overall, like considering all the factors here, what do we think, like who do we think this bike is for? Levy, you wanna start with that? Yeah, I think this is gonna be a good bike for somebody who's not tied up with the latest numbers and thinking they need, you know, a bike that's 20 feet long and has a 30 degree head angle. Like this thing, it works just fine. It's not gonna be as stable and as planted when things get fast and rough, but for a lot of people, this bike is never gonna hold them back. So if they're just looking for a solid trail bike that comes with a good spec, yeah, I don't really see a problem. All right, so there you have it. There's our review of the Fizari Cascade Peak here at our value field test. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for plenty more videos from the trip.